members of the organizing committee, honorable jury members, my fellow colleagues, and the highly light attendees of this conference. A very good evening to you all. Myself, Dr. Prachi Sharma, it is my privilege to present our study conducted at King George's Medical University on instantaneous wave-free ratio and fractional flow reserve, effect of variation in left ventricular and diastolic pressure. At the outset, I must say that I have no disclosures or conflict of interest. We all know that for intermediate coronary artery stenosis, we have to do either fractional flow reserve or instantaneous wave-free ratio to know the functional significance of the lesion according to the latest guidelines. But there were certain issues with fractional flow reserve like patient discomfort, increased time, cost, and concerns that it is affected by hemodynamic factors. So there came indices that were hyperemia free like IFR, DFR, and RFR. We also know that instantaneous wave-free ratio allows easier evaluation of serial lesions with pullback. It was hypothesized that in conditions with elevated LV and diastolic pressure, there is increased functional microvascular disease, which leads to falsely high distal pressure and hence falsely elevated and false negative fractional flow reserve. Why did we do the study? It is known that in intermediate coronary artery stenosis, we have to do functional testing, but we do not really know if both FFR and IFR hold equally good under all hemodynamics. Suppose we have heart failure patients who have varied range of LV and diastolic pressure. So whether to use fractional flow reserve in such patients or not, to use instantaneous wave-free ratio, or we may use either of these, we do not know. The best of all is most of the comparing both IFR and FFR under variable hemodynamics, looking into account the left ventricular and diastolic pressure and comparing these two. So we aimed to study the dynamic effects of changes in left ventricular and diastolic pressure on changes in instantaneous wave-free ratio and fractional flow reserve simultaneously to find if both change similarly or one is affected one more significantly than the other under varied hemodynamics. We included patients with stable coronary artery disease with intermediate grade stenosis on coronary angiogram. Patients with acute coronary syndrome were excluded. We also excluded patients with significant left main coronary artery disease and functional class four heart failure and patients with significant hypotension. For 20 such patients, we calculated, we measured the left ventricular and diastolic pressure at baseline. And along with that, we also measured the instantaneous wave free ratio and fractional flow reserve. After that, intravenous nitroglycerin infusion was given to reduce the left ventricular and diastolic pressure. Then corresponding instantaneous wave free ratio and fractional flow reserve were re-evaluated. We required two arterial excess sites for each patient, one for that IFR and FFR measurement, and the other one for LV and diastolic pressure measurement. Intracoronary adenosine was given for the FFR measurements. The pressure and Doppler sensitive wire that we used was Verata Plus from Volcano Corporation. The baseline characteristics of our patients were the mean age of our patients was 56 years, 75% of them were males, they were 40% hypertensive, 30% diabetic, and majority of the patients had lesions in their left anterior descending coronary artery, while 35% had lesion in the left circumflex artery. What we found was through the box whisker analysis, we find that while the left ventricular end diastolic pressure was reduced from a mean value of 16.2 to a mean value of 9.5 mmHg with a significant reduction of 6.7 mmHg after infusion of nitroglycerin, the change in, in fractional flow reserve were from a value of 0.75 to a value of 0.72 mean and the simultaneous changes in instantaneous wave-free ratio were from a mean value of 0 0.80 to a mean value of 0 0.76. To ass assess that, we had correlation analysis through the scatter diagram. And what we found in this correlation was that though there was a significant change in the left ventricular and diastolic pressure from a mean value of 16.2 to 9.5, but the corresponding changes 
in fractional flow reserve and IFR were non-significant with a p-value of 0.227 and 0.105 respectively. We also analyzed this through linear regression analysis and found that LV and diastolic pressure changes did not independently predict the changes in FFR and IFR. The coefficient of determination was merely 8% and 13.9% respectively. That is, for one MMHG change in LV and diastolic pressure, the FFR and IFR changed merely by 0.004, and which was statistically non-significant. So we may conclude that among patients with stable coronary artery disease with intermediate stenosis, there is no significant correlation between changes in left ventricular and diastolic pressure and instantaneous wave free ratio or fractional flow reserve values. So both of these may e are equally valid in assessing lesions under variable hemodynamics. But we must say that there are certain limitations to our study, that it is a single center observational study, very small study size, and also we excluded patients with acute coronary syndrome, where the hemodynamics are altogether different. This is definitely an important study, as it is likely the first study, comparing the effects of changes in left ventricular and diastolic pressure on both IFR and FFR simultaneously. So we may say that both of these variables may be used interchangeably with confidence in varied hemodynamics. Like in heart failure patients or patients with varying systolic blood pressure, these may be used with unequivocal results. Our study sets the platform for future research with larger number of heterogeneous patient population. Thank you. Thank you. That's a nice presentation. I just want to know that at baseline, what was the inclusion criteria for LV and diastolic pressure? And what was the target LV and diastolic pressure in your study? Yes, sir. so baseline LV and diastolic pressure, there was no criteria as such that it has to be this much only. But it should be more than 8 mmHg definitely because that was the point where we had to stop our nitroglycerin infusion. The criteria for stopping were, with if the, there were four criteria, if the operator decided to stop the infusion because of certain uh, reasons, or the patient felt some unfavorable symptoms, the left ventricular and diastolic pressure fell below 8 mmHg, or the systolic blood pressure fell below 80 mmHg. Yeah. Why did you choose nit you chose nitroglycerin as the drug to reduce LV and diastolic pressure? Previous data, there are other studies with nitroprusside. Why did you choose nitroglycerin? Uh, because of because see, see, if you look at two, the duration, the effect of nitroglycerin is longer when compared to nitroprusside. So why, why why was this chosen? Can you just give yes, me an answer? Uh, exactly right, sir. All the previous studies have uh, seen the effects on FFR with nitroprusside, although there has been no study with IFR. And uh, we chose nitroglycerin for our uh, convenience and easier availability at our centers. Any other questions, Karta? No, I have no questions. Please proceed. Okay. Thank you very much. Very good presentation. We'll go to the Thank next you. one. Thank you.